Oh Lord! So it's late at night. I got some toxic liquids in my system. As we stare at this useless wooden toy, it's some things I wanted to just speak about. Also, it's some new items up on the website if y'all want to go shop. I'm going to play this uh, Louis Lopez rough cut. And we're just going to discuss a few things, man. This is a new segment I, I figure I'm going to probably start doing maybe weekly or so on the channel. Just useless wooden toy banter. You feel me? The name comes from the slap message board topic, of course. Useless wooden toy banter. I felt like there's no better uh, term to describe this segment other than useless wooden toy banter. It'll basically just be shop talk, you know what I mean? Like just skateboard talk, you feel me? Just me uh, me talking about random shit that's going on in the industry right now and just just different skateboard related topics that don't really matter or make any sense, and you feel me? Just random shit to get you through your day, you feel me? When you just need some shit to listen to. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about was the uh, decline in popularity of street league skateboarding. I can't necessarily just say the, the decline in popularity because it might be getting more popular. But I'll just say the uh, the aura is dying. The SLS aura is dying. I remember I remember back in the day when I was kind of younger younger, and Rob Deerdeck was on Fantasy Factory and he was pitching the idea of the instant scoring experience in skateboarding, you know, a thing that was so like pioneering and it was great. It was a new thing in skateboarding, some shit that we had never thought of or imagined at the time. And uh, it was great when it first started. All the veterans were a part of it. Paul Rodriguez was out there, like Shane O'Neill, like Tory Putwill, all the all the greats in skateboarding was out there participating. It was just this huge spectacle. It was the best thing smoking. Nobody really was even giving a fuck about how the scores were calculated and shit. We we felt like everything was fair around that time, but we also didn't have any prior uh prior information to go off of to base our to base our um you feel me, our feelings or opinions off of. So it was just this great thing, but you fast forward to now in twenty twenty four, SLS Apex happened and I just seen like I don't know, I I don't see people talking about that shit at all. Even though that was one of the smaller like pop up type events, uh street league events. I wouldn't even just single that one out. I just say street league in general. When when the time comes around for street league, I don't hear as much conversation about it. Of course, an ad would pop up on my shit when I'm not even like when I'm <laughs> passively watching some shit. But uh, I don't hear people even talking about uh, street league at all no more. For real, like I can't say at all. People still talk about it. It is still a skateboarding event. It's a spectacle that motherfuckers still want to watch and each and attend from time to time or whatever. But the hype has died tremendously, bro. Let me know in the comments if y'all agree or if y'all think I'm just yapping. But I feel like the hype has died, bro. The veterans do not give a fuck anymore. Like I said earlier, when it first started, all the vets, all the the top pros in the game was a part of it. You feel me? But now, like, when is the last time P-Rod has been in the SLS? When is the last time Shane O'Neill has been in the SLS? You get what I'm saying? It shied when he was doing some of the more recent uh, SLS appearances he was not giving a fuck about it like the the few veterans that are still there don't even care literally this nigga a shot will pull up the sls with headphones on and bail three to five tricks in the, in his fucking run and not give a damn like the judges i mean not the judges the announcers would always be talking about how he's your favorite skater favorite skater and then he gets out there and does that bullshit just embarrassing us you feel me us it's shot advocates but yeah, the, the veterans don't care. Niger don't give a fuck really anymore. It seems like this nigga been bailing on street leagues. His ass caught what he had, food poisoning or a stomach virus or some shit right before one. Conveniently, right before one that Utah was in, he had a fucking stomach virus or some shit. I don't know, man. I feel like ever since ever since uh, Utah done came around, that nigga ass acting scary. During the, uh, the last street league broadcast, what happened? He told me he fell into a cactus. Twin, I fell into a cactus when I was young before too, so I ain't gonna lie, that shit ain't nothing to play with. But Twin was at, like, bro, you were a top athlete, bro. You were one of the top skateboarders, top competing skateboarders at least, you know what I mean? And you you letting a, a, a fucking cactus stop you from appearing at a street league. Even though, bro, he competed in street league with a stomach virus before, you feel me? Why he was sick before, you feel me? Like, that nigga, somebody he fell into a cactus and his knee was too fucked to compete. Or some bullshit he said. 
made a little video, a little selfie video, explaining why he wasn't going to be there and shit. I don't know. I feel like these niggas don't really care about it no anymore. Like, the hype has died down a lot. The judges don't fuck with the newer talent that heavy either, which is so crazy. The It's like... It's like the judge, I mean not the judges, yeah the judges and the announcers, they like only really care about the veterans. I ain't gonna say only, but they mainly care about the veterans and shit. Like I feel like they get unfairly scored like in their favor though, you feel me? Like they get scored way higher than some of the newer dudes at times, you feel me? Like motherfuckers like Braden Hoban, like he's a breath of fresh air in SLS, I'm not gonna lie. I, I root for him down there every time. Him and Giovanni, Giovanni is a good one too, like. I'm not gonna say it's all the way dead, cause we are we, we do got some motherfuckers like that. That's some heavy hitters out there. Like Giovanni goes crazy. Braden is like the sleeper, you feel me? The the, the sleeper guy, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. He's the guy that everybody like slip on, the underdog or whatever, but then he pops out of the apex, impossible nose grind, first try down the hand red, like niggas just be doing wild shit. Like, I fuck with him. He he treats the courses uniquely too. He don't do the same bullshit ass spinny tail nose sliding ass tricks that everybody else be doing you feel me which i'm sure he's capable but like he's an out the box thinker he's, he's like a wild card in a sense you feel me like he's one of my favorites though so like yeah they do got they do got a couple newer guys that's kind of shaking shit up a little bit i'll give them that but i just feel like the aura overall has died down to it like it's it's not the same as it used to be bro uh I feel like, uh, oh yeah, Desenzo's hanging in there. Ryan Desenzo been hanging in there. His old ass. He's like the oldest nigga in charge. 37 years old, still out there competing, still going crazy, still throwing down big shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That shit is surprising. Most niggas at his age, as you can see, none of his peers ain't out there. You feel me? Like, these niggas ain't doing the shit that this nigga be doing at that age. That shit's actually crazy. Uh, Yeah, maybe he'll, maybe he'll motivate P-Rod and them to get back out there at some point. I don't know. These niggas need to get back out there. I feel like this shit will be more exciting if we bring them niggas back. The original, the original SLS uh, top competitors. If we bring them niggas back, I think this shit will be just a little bit more exciting. Or even if they just do like a special, a special event one time where they bring the veterans back. You know what I mean? Just something like that. I don't know. Just to, I don't know, twin. I just feel like that shit dying out and they can do something to fix this shit, bro. I don't know. Sco start scoring better. Uh, better obstacles, better courses. I don't know, bro. Something. This ain't up to me, though. I'm just speaking on shit that I've uh, observed over time. Uh, another thing. Is that everything I had to say about Street League? It might be everything. If I might have missed some shit. Y'all chime in in the comments, too. Feel free. This is an open discussion. There's no right or wrong in this, you feel me, in this format. This is all just opinions and just talking, you feel me? We just talking. Uh... I need to goddamn start live streaming too, too, and I think this would be a good thing to do on live streams. Let me know if y'all would like that. That way I can, uh, we can all interact with each other in real time and, you know what I mean, like, hear each other's opinions and shit in real time. I can read off some of y'all's opinions. I might have guests on here every now and then too, you feel me, like, so we can hear what they got to say about certain takes and shit that I have, see if they agree, see if they disagree, you feel me? That might be a good idea down the line. I'm just kind of nervous when it comes to this live streaming shit. Maybe that's a topic that I, uh, uh, touch on real quick too is just live streaming. Have y'all noticed that like skateboarders doing like media is like I feel like that shit is uh it's just a new thing. Niggas is noticing that you ain't gotta skate no more. Niggas is noticing that you can be popping and skateboarding without skateboarding. <laughs> and I feel like that's great. Like it's it's bad but it's great at the same time. I think it's good because it's good because people that aren't super skilled can eat, you feel me, can still make money and profit and have a, a presence in the industry without having to like break themselves off and shit and try to go unrealistically hard for shit that they're just not physically capable of, you feel me, that's a good thing and also I feel like it's good that because it, it kind of separates, it separates everybody so the shit's not quite as saturated like the, the core skateboarding industry ain't quite as saturated with just skateboarders now. Now that niggas know that they can exist elsewhere in skateboarding and still profit, the niggas like like the Louis Lopez's and shit that don't do all the different shit, you feel me, like streaming and blogging and all that type of shit, these niggas can exist in their own right, just like the, uh, the what you call it, the YouTubers and vloggers and, uh, and streamers and shit, like, we can all exist in our own right too. The only bad thing about it, though, is 
when you become known for doing it this way, like, I can't even just say when you get known for doing it this way, like the way I'm doing it. Whichever way you get known for, for doing it, that's what people want from you. So, like, the Pedro Delfino's, like, his channel, I, well, I, I'm not going to just say his channel's not popping, but I feel like, I feel like it's not as popping. He's not as popping on YouTube as he might have been if he was never just a well-known pro skateboarder before he started doing the streaming and shit, you feel me? And that shit goes vice versa too. Like niggas like Lamont Hope probably could have been like a top pro skateboarder. The dude was crazy good, like super good, but you know, he was a YouTuber and shit and a TikToker and all that type of shit. He was a, a skate influencer. Same with niggas like Baby Yoshando is good, you feel me? Uh Gift the Haters good, bro. Like these niggas, but they, they don't get the same type of core skateboarding respect just because of what they do. Even like if I was crazy good, like I know I wouldn't get the same fucking core skateboarding respect either just because I'm a, a damn YouTube skateboard talker. You feel me? I understand that, but you know, it's just kind of crazy. But at the same time, like I said, I feel like it's good because we can, we all coexist within the same realm of skateboarding, but in our own ways instead of everybody all just fighting for the same fucking shit, trying to do everything one way. It's like people figuring out that there's new ways to. To do this shit, you feel me? You can be yourself, you can show your personality, you ain't gotta be no elusive character. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta follow no no rules, no standards, you ain't gotta listen to nobody's deadlines and shit. You can go do your own shit. Even if you do want to follow the core skater route, like nowadays you can do the Bubba Jackson shit and put together your own full lengths and shit. Like you ain't got no no team manager or no team goddamn that's that's uh, paying you to go on trips and all this type of shit. You feel me? Get clips and all this and that. Man, you can do this shit yourself with your bros and you can come up with your own like clothing brand or board brand, whatever the fuck you want to do. And as long as you're reaching the audience, like you can make a living off of this shit. You ain't got to wait on nobody. You ain't got to follow no guidelines. Bro, I fuck with it this way. I fuck with this shit. And it's kind of the same thing. Like if he don't want to, Bubba Jackson, he don't have to goddamn go to, he don't have to, uh, what the fuck? That homeless nigga whole ass crack was out. Bubba Jackson don't have to be considered like no core skateboarder. He can be like, it's almost kind of like the music industry, bro. When I think about it, how you got like signed rappers and you got the independent artists. Like, like Drake is on a big label, but he could go independent if he wanted to. But like he's known as this label guy, this larger than life figure. So if he went independent, it might kind of, I don't know, it might be weird. It might be a weird shift for him. But then you got niggas like, uh, I'm trying to think of another rapper that just recently like went independent. Like his motherfuckers like YG. Like YG is independent. I think he's still independent. He don't exist on like, like he's mainstream still. You feel me? He got a lot of mainstream commercial success, but like he still does his own thing. He he pays for all his own shit out of pocket. You feel me? He handles it all his own business. He ain't got to answer to nobody if he don't want to. I feel like certain people, uh, certain people, and that could be a bad example now, but certain people I just feel like operate better on their own watch. You feel me? Certain people are more independent go-getters than goddamn order takers and listeners, you feel me? Some people, and that's not even a, a bad thing to be an order taker or a listener. That's just how some people wired, you feel me? Some people need to go the traditional route because that's just what's for them. But like I said, though, yeah, I just like the progressiveness of the skate world. A lot of people say that this shit like this like is diluting it or whatever, diluting the industry. And is, they say like this shit is bad, like streaming killed skateboarding, YouTubers killed skateboarding, and TikTok killed skateboarding i don't think that man i feel like this uh this entrepreneurial spirit like that shit needs to stay alive like you feel me like people need to keep doing this shit the way they're doing it bro because if not if there was no progression in the sport the sport wouldn't be thriving the way it is well i can't just say thriving but i say it wouldn't still be growing and expanding in any capacity if there was no progression i'll just leave it at that so yeah, I hate to go off on a tangent about that shit because I know a lot of people probably going to disagree with me, but it is what it is. People probably disagree with a lot of shit I say on this channel. It is what the fuck it is. Speaking of shit that people will probably disagree with me on, Ride on Grinds is another thing that I've been wanting to... Boy, I'm on, I even started to make a whole video about Ride on Grinds, bro. Like, this is a new trend. I can't say a new trend. It's been a trend for a little while now, but like, Ride on Grinds, bro. Like, really? Ride on Grinds becoming the thing? I remember being a kid, if you were seen trying to ride into your grind, you was looked at like a pussy. Like you soft as hell, you a bitch, you cheating. Like you what the fuck you can't pop into your grind, bro? Like 
Nigga, that shit was not cool, bro, when I was young, bro. It's so crazy how, like, how shit happens, bro. How shit, like, just will shift. Like, the right nigga get seen doing one. Or or somebody gets seen doing one just the right way or at the right spot. And now, all of a sudden, it's an epidemic. And it's cool. Like, that shit is insane to me. Same thing goes for, like, uh... Like skinny jeans and skateboarding, like back in the day, just trends in general, bro. I remember when I was super young, nigga. I used to tell my mama to go in Walmart and get me. When we was in Walmart, like shopping and shit, I would ask for husky pants. I ain't never been big in my goddamn life. I always been a skinny nigga, but I asked for huskies just because I wanted my pants to like be baggy as shit. I wanted them to fit big and baggy because that's what was cool in skateboarding, baggy jeans. And then when skinnies came around, you seen niggas like Ryan Sheckler rocking skinnies. Man, we all gave him shit at the time. Like, bro, these tight ass pants, him and like fucking Corey Duffel or, or Pat Duff, whichever the fuck, Duffy nigga, whichever one of them niggas. Dustin Darling, all these niggas with the tight ass pants back then. Like, we would get them shit. But then it became like a thing though. Like, that shit became a swag after a minute. Like, tight pants was fire. And then it came back to like it is now. Overly baggy pants, nigga, baggier than they was back when I was young and we was rocking the baggies. The super duper extra crazy baggy you could fit a goddamn old school Windows computer with the booty on the back of it inside of your pants leg baggy ass pants. That baggy, you feel me? You could put a vacuum cleaner in each leg and nobody will know. Niggas wearing pants that baggy these days. That shit's crazy now. But yeah, it's just crazy how trends and shit come and go. Like, but like the ride on grinds, that's, that's one that I never expected to ever become a trend, bro. Riding into your grind. I still to this day, I think they look pretty cool. You feel me? I think they look pretty cool. And I would I would get a ride on grind clip if I find a good enough spot for one. And if I think of the right ride on grind trick to do, like I would probably do one, you feel me? I'd get a clip on it. Like I'm not hating on it by any means, cause like I said, I think they look pretty cool. It's just insane to me because when I was young, that shit was not cool in no capacity. Nobody ever would have thought you was cool for doing that shit, bro. Not one person at the park would have been like, dude, sick. The only way they might have done that is if you was like a fucking kid. If you was like 10 years or under, then they might have congratulated you just because like, cool, you're you're trying to skateboard. You're trying to do something on your skateboard other than pose. You get what I'm saying? So that was like the only way that you might have been accepted for doing a ride on grind back then. You had to be a fucking baby. Nowadays, we got grown-ass men riding into their grinds. That shit is insane to me. Bubba Jackson is a prime example. He doing so good, though, bro. That's what I mean. Like, if you get the right spot, the right ride-on-grind combo, you feel me? It's warranted. I fought with this nigga, like, ride-on-grinds. He is one of the niggas that made me a believer in them bitches because I still hated on them for a while when I started seeing them uh, uh, surface on the internet and shit, all the trendy ride-on-grind clips. I was like, what? Did this nigga really just not pop into the grind? Like, what? I don't know. That shit threw me for a goddamn a crazy loop when I first seen it. But I've, I've learned to accept it. That also could just come with uh, time and familiar, familiarity. Once you see something so much, it becomes more familiar to you. So you kind of accept it more. That could be all it is. Maybe they are still lame as fuck. But we just done seen so many now that like... We just accept it by default. I don't know. What y'all think in the comments? Do y'all fuck with Ride on Grinds? Let me know, goddamn. I think it's pretty cool, but what do y'all think about that shit, man? I don't know if any of y'all remember. Maybe I got some young, young, young viewers that don't remember back in the day when Ride on Grinds wasn't a cool thing, but I definitely remember a time when, yeah, you was not getting no props for that shit, bro. None whatsoever. Goddamn... Uh, what else I wanted to talk? Oh yeah, I wrote I wrote some notes on my phone. Some of these notes that I'm looking at is like, why the fuck did I even type this shit? I wrote some shit about hardware in here. Like I be having random ass skate thoughts during the day, and like I'm kind of like, I'm an extroverted introvert. You feel me? If that makes sense. So like I ain't talking to niggas all day. I like being by my goddamn self most of the time. You feel me? I go skate for like three hours a day, four hours or whatever, and that's my social time for the day. You feel me? But other than that, I like to be by myself, so I just have a thought and I jot that shit down because I ain't got nobody to just talk to, uh, you feel me, about it. Except for like, I got one one homie that I talk to all day, Armand, I talk to this nigga like on the ground about skating all day, every day. We be sending videos and voice messages and shit, but 
yeah, other than that, though, like, I just be writing down little topics and ideas that I might want to talk about uh, on the YouTube channel. Because, like, y'all are, like, my skate community. You feel me? Like, y'all are, like, my skate homies that we can talk skate skateboarding. You feel me? We can talk skateboarding together. So, I be writing this shit down so I can talk to y'all about it. But, yeah, I wrote some shit about fucking hardware. I don't even know what the fuck I was getting at. What the fuck I was getting at about that. But, uh, the next thing, though, was P-Rides Press Run. Is any of y'all stoked on P Rod's recent press run that he's been going on? I don't even know what the press run is for. I don't know if he's promoting a product or what. Let me know in the comments if y'all know why this nigga is doing so many interviews. P Rod has done approximately 1,300 interviews in the past 13 days. Not literally, but that nigga literally is going crazy though on, on the interviews though. Like that nigga done did so many interviews on multiple podcasts. I know y'all know about the one he did on Mikey Taylor shit, cause uh Gift the Hater dropped that damn video. Going crazy on this nigga, boy. <laughs> the nigga brought the old Gift the Hater back. One thing I fuck with about that nigga shit is though, you about can't argue with how the shit he's saying though. Like, that nigga Gift the Hater be coming with them points, boy. Nah, for real, he be coming with them points. But yeah, hey, though, this nigga uh, P Rod been on a crazy press run. This nigga went on the, on the live stream drunk, talking hella shit about. This nigga was, P Rod was in the fucking interview drunk, talking about niggas that can do all them flips and shit on their board. He talking about nobody gives a fuck. Like, I'd rather see a kick flip that looks good versus you doing a triple flip. He was saying shit like that, talking about people going crazy doing tech, two tech tricks. Like flip ins, flip in, grind, flip out, shit like that. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, nigga, you the one made that shit popular, twin. You was the tech guy. Nigga, yo ass did crook, nolly, late front foot flip out, bro. Like, what you mean? Talking about niggas getting too tech, doing flip in, flip out, twin. You, you that's your fault, bro. <laughs> but whatever, that ain't, that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to know if y'all niggas are fucking with the press run that he's been on. And uh, have y'all been watching these interviews? Me personally, I haven't. I feel like he oversaturating the market with them bitches. But I don't know what the hell he trying to promote. But I hope that shit sell, goddamn. Many interviews that he done did. This nigga like, I don't know, twin. We want to see a video part of some shit or some clips, twin. Stop talking. Niggas don't want to hear you talking on video, bro. Especially not P-Rod. P-Rod is not the type of guy that you would just want to like go hang out with you feel me i mean he might be in real life you feel me i ain't saying that he's not a cool dude i'm just saying his whole personality like in the media since he popped onto the skate scene he was never like you feel me known as he, he never portrayed himself as like party animal or super extrovert you know what i mean or just like super cool dude he just promoted himself as just like a good skateboarder a good dude that skateboards you feel me ain't nobody Nobody gr wants to grow up and be and be just like P-Rod, you know. They might want to grow up and skate just as good as him, but ain't nobody ever said growing up that they wanted to be like him or they wanted to party with P-Rod. You get what I'm saying? He was just a regular fucking dude. So, I don't know. Yeah, niggas ain't trying to really just hear this regular dude that can skate amazingly talk. Niggas just want to see you skate amazing, twin. The pressure run, not needed. Cater. Also, Cater. Well, I was finna I was finna talk about Cater's Thrasher cover, but since I'm talking about press runs, <laughs> Cater is a nigga that never needs to do a press run ever. This nigga is a black Beavis and Butthead, bro. Y'all ever heard a Cater Silla interview, bro? Please come in and tell me your first impressions on a Cater interview if you ever watched one. Besides, this nigga is too high and probably don't know where the fuck he is right now. This nigga cater interviews, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. That shit is unstomachable, bro. I can't, I cannot listen to a whole cater interview. And cater is one of my favorite skaters. And I am a fucking nerd when it comes to like favorite people or public figures and shit. Like I go do, I go do years worth of research on you, boy, in one night. Figure out as much as I can about a motherfucker when I really like find somebody that I fuck with. And like I tried to, man, I tried to dig into the world of cater. Man, nah, boy, this nigga, oh my god, this nigga literally cannot form a sentence, bro, like, that shit is kind of pitiful, bro. Every time he goes to answer a question, he'll be like, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that shit be pissing me off, I don't know, uh, fuck, like, bro, like, just give an answer, bro, even if it's a bullshit answer, 
at least give an answer just for the sake of letting us know that you can give an answer to a question, period. Because right now, I feel like this nigga is like top tier incompetence. If there was a goddamn, if we was doing like a tier list video for incompetent skaters, this nigga would be in the S tier for sure, dominating the fuck out of the S tier. That nigga, I don't know what the fuck he got going on. But anyway, definitely excited about the Thrasher cover. Uh, I think it was a switch front side flip over like some big ass shit. Yeah, switch front side flip over some big ass shit. I hope this nigga got a part in the works, boy. I'm hoping that that's what that shit is from, bro. We ready to see some goddamn cater shit. We know he got, well, I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, if anybody was wondering why he hadn't been posting clips, he was injured. Uh, I'm sure if y'all keep up with him, though, y'all know that. He had an injury. He, like, blew his knee out or some shit. Forget what the fuck he was trying. Some some crazy cater-ass shit. Yeah, blew his knee out. He was fucked for a while. But, yeah, apparently he's back filming. As we can see, this nigga just caught a crazy thrasher cover off the hiatus. And that also uh, makes me think about another topic that I really wanted to discuss on the channel as well. This front side flip was mesmerizing right here. And a lot of bitches started looking good to me. I almost lost my train of thought. I'm trying to see the make. This the one right here. This got to be the make. Type shit. But golf though. Cater is a golf boy now, bro. Cater don't even care about rapping. He talking about he already uh he already announced that he was starting to rap and shit. He done made him a song. He finna start making music. And now he been taking golfing serious. That nigga probably finna put skateboarding on the back burner, knowing his ass, knowing his I don't know ass. Speaking of him, this nigga had said something a while back about he wanted to start a company, a skate company, a board company, or some shit like that. He said, I don't know how the fuck that would do, but. Yeah, that's neither here nor there. We'll see that. We'll see that shit when it comes, if it does come. I wish him much success though if he does decide to do that. But yeah, this golf shit. How y'all feel about all the skateboarders trying to become pro golfers now? What's up with that? Like, they all say the same thing too about how like skateboarding and golfing are so similar. Which I could get that, but I mean, it's also. I think people got to think about the fact that golfing is a sport. And whether you like it or not, skateboarding is also a sport. You feel me? It doesn't it doesn't have a lot of the same confines that most sports have, but skateboarding is still a sport. It is an athletic uh, you feel me, an athletic pastime that people can earn a career in and make a living off of doing. You know what I mean? Like it's it's still a sport. There are rules and regulations in some of the control formats of skateboarding. It's still a sport. A lot of people try to be, it's not a sport, it's an art form, it's a lifestyle. Like, yeah, it's cool, it's those things also, but so is basketball. Basketball is also a lifestyle, you feel me, for a lot of people. It's also an art form for a lot of people. But it's also a sport for motherfuckers that take it serious and compete. Same with skateboarding, but regardless, uh, yeah, motherfuckers always, motherfuckers that, uh, the skate golfers, they always saying that shit, talking about how, like, it's so similar and shit, but... I think they're just trying to justify that shit to make it seem cool. It's like a fucking elite skateboard golfer cult or some shit that you get inducted to once you become a pro, bro. It's like these niggas start getting money and instantly pick up the clubs. That shit's crazy. And what's so sad about it, for me personally, is that I want to start golfing, bro. On God, I want to become a golfer too, bro. I love, like, golf scene so far to me, bro. I used to hit balls with my partner Aaron back in the day. Like he was my best friend in like middle school and shit. Like we used to hit balls around his house and shit. Pause. But like golf seems like a fun sport. I played putt putt and shit a couple times. I ain't never just golf seriously, but I don't know. It kind of like I don't know. It seemed lame to me a little bit now when I see all the fucking skaters, all the pro skaters trying to golf and shit. Nah, it made me damn near not even wanna. Pick up the clubs, cause now it's just gonna look like appropriation. <laughs> now I just wanna golf just cause all the skaters are golfing. I seen Cater golfing and now I wanna do it. But whole time I've been fucked with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think I could get into it like them though, bro. I don't know why why all the skaters wanna do that one thing out of all things. Like niggas don't go bowling no more or some shit. You feel me? Like, I don't know. I got a, I got some homies back where I'm from that love to bowl. These niggas got their own bowling balls, own bowling shoes, and all type of shit. They go to the bowling alley, get drinks, and bowl for real. That's some shit that's kind of more reasonable in my opinion because, like, I don't know. I just feel like more people 
would get into bowling just because there are bowling alleys that everybody go to. Golfing though, like that's a kind of niche sport. Kind of like skateboarding is pretty niche too though, so maybe that's why, I don't know. Maybe skaters just like niche ass shit. Maybe that's all it is. I don't know. I ain't hating though, I fuck with golfing. It's just weird as fuck to me to see that all the pros golf. I could not have predicted this. when In my younger years, I would have never in a million years thought that I would see my favorite pro skateboarder hitting golf clubs and talking about golfing on skateboarding podcasts and posting shit about them golfing on social media and shit like, I don't know, that shit crazy to me, bro. I think it's just like a rich thing anyway, though, because golf is like a rich ass man sport. And when you start getting rich, you start doing rich people shit, you feel me? Rich people do not send they send they self downstairs and shit no more than they have to. You know what I mean? They go do chill shit when it's time to chill. So maybe that's all it is, man. Golf is the chill version of uh, skateboarding. It's the chill way to get buck. They go hit buck holes instead of jumping buck, buck sets and shit. I don't fucking know. I wonder what that nigga said in that car. I'm gonna go back and rewatch this uh, rough cut later on so I can be fully attentive. Only thing I don't like about watching rough cuts to these pros videos is it lets me know how good I'm not. Cause these niggas will try some shit for like 10 tries, you feel me? 10 little tries is not that bad on the street spot, especially for a crazy trick. They give about 10 tries and they got some shit that, that you would think took them a whole fucking day to get. You know what I mean? That shit's crazy. Some shit that would definitely take me a whole day and maybe maybe another trip to get. You know what I mean? That shit be crazy. That shit. She be discouraging, man. I ain't gonna lie. But I do like the... Oh, my God. Speaking of the devil, right on grind. I do like to see the process behind people video parts, though. That shit's fire as fuck. And it really gets you to see how good these skaters really are, bro. Like that, bro. That's a, that's a good ride on grind trip, bro. That's a good ass spot too, bro, for real. But it's just, it's just like, look at how quick he's doing this shit. Yeah, you see Buddy back there, his jaw was dropped, and he's with, bro. He know how good he is, and his jaw dropped. Like, look how good these niggas are, bro. Just that quick, bro. That shit was not that many tries. That shit's in fucking same, bro. That shit is crazy to me. Uh, yeah, though, uh, I seen a clip, I seen a clip earlier on Instagram, uh, nigga was at, uh, where was this nigga, he was at Venice Beach Skate Park, it was Paul, uh, damn, I forget the nigga name, I forget his name, it was like Paul, some shit, uh, hey, he did a Nolly 360 inward hill flip down the three block at Venice Beach Skate Park, this nigga did a Nolly 360 inward hill down Venice Beach three block at the skate park. And everybody was hyped at the park. Everybody was hyped in the Instagram comments. Everybody was hyped. That shit just had me feeling like, I don't know. It had me kind of confused, bro. Like, that's a fire trick to me, bro. That's a hard ass trick. And that's crazy. If I see anybody doing Nolly 360 in over here down anything, I'm going to be stoked. But like the fact that like niggas like Jeff Wan Song do shit like this all the time and get so much hate for it. It don't make sense to me, bro. I understand his style ain't quite as good per se as most other skaters, most other uh, pro skaters or whatever that's even half as good as him. His style ain't as good or whatever, whatever. But like, for one, style is subjective. But the name, these tricks that he's doing is not subjective. That is objective. He's objectively doing this trick. He's doing a, Jeff One Song does a Nolly 360 Emory Hill flip. Other buddy does Nolly 360 Emory Hill flip. Jeff is getting no claps, but bro is getting handshakes and hugs. You feel me? You want to see him outside? You gonna see me with pancakes and drugs? Whatever the fuck Riff Raff said. That nigga, that nigga Jeff one song get hella hate. I swear it's like people hate just cause it's trendy to hate on niggas though. You feel me? Like that was that was the uh, the next topic I wanted to speak on was just like trend hating. Like niggas gotta stop that trend hating shit. Like I said, though, I understand bro swag ain't all the way there. But, like, bro, stop hating just because you hear other niggas hating on that nigga, bro. I feel like a lot of niggas don't even... I feel like a lot of niggas don't even hate uh, Jeff One Song style of skating for real, for real. 
they just they just talk about how bad his style is and they talk about how much they don't like him just because they know they can be included in a conversation. You feel me? They don't have to feel like a contrarian in a sense. You know what I mean? I'll be the contrarian. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to tell you, nigga, I fuck with it because that's just my authentic uh that's my, that's just that's just me. That's that's my opinion. That's my authentic opinion, bro. I fuck with the nigga. His style ain't all the way there. I agree. I don't mean you should just hate on the nigga, bro. He is fire shit at skateboarding. That uh that the the contest gift the hater did, that shit was blowing me too, bro, cause the like it wasn't nothing that he did or nothing. It's really like big Nike. His ass was blowing me, bro. The way they was judging Jeff skateboarding, like all them niggas was being dickheads to Jeff at the beginning for sure. They all was being dickheads about his skating. But that big Nike nigga was being ruthless. <laughs> it was kind of funny though. I ain't gonna lie. It made for good content. I'm glad they did that because it definitely made for good content. And we all know Jeff was gum Jeff was good enough to pull through for the win anyway, like he did, which I'm glad he did. It kind of just further proved the point that it further proved the point, in my opinion, that even though people are hating on this nigga and that his style ain't all the way there, he's still the best skateboarder there. Like he was the best skateboarder in that scenario. I feel like it just proved that it further cemented that idea. You feel me? He was the underdog. They were scoring him low just to be scoring him low. Just being dicks to this nigga. Like people are doing obviously easier tricks, objectively easier tricks, and getting way higher scores than him. But I don't know, man. That shit's just crazy. But y'all niggas gotta stop hating on niggas just cause everybody else hate them. Them niggas might them niggas might really just not like his style of skating for real though, you know. I'm not saying that they just trend hating, but I see a lot of niggas in these internet comments trend hating. Not even just on Jeff One Song. I don't wanna I don't wanna make it seem like this is just me goddamn riding dick, you feel me, on Jeff One Song right now. I'm just saying I'm just using him as an as an example. For instance, uh like Beatrice, Beatrice Damon. I made a video about her a while back and I seen hella hate well. I ain't gonna just say they hating on her just because I was hating on her in the video. But like I, I be still trying to give props. Like she does got a clean style, you feel me? Like she looks good on the skateboard. She's just not that good at skateboarding. You get what I'm saying? Like she's not exceptionally good. But she do look good at skating, you feel me? Like she got a clean style, you feel me? Like I fuck with it. She got some swag about herself, she know how to dress, she know how to put on clothes. That's why she does modeling and shit too, you feel me? You gotta get in where you fit in, do what you can to get where you gotta get. You know what I mean? So I dig that. But uh, yeah, my only uh, argument was that she's just not pro level at skateboarding. But it's like when people hear somebody on a YouTube video like saying those type of things, like saying anything bad about a person, it seems like people in the comments, it's like, I don't know, it's like it flips a switch in their mind where they feel like, oh, bet this person hates that. I kind of don't like that either, but now I extra don't like it. You feel me? So now they got to express like a uh, overzealous hate. I don't even know if that's proper uh, use of that term, but it's like, yeah, they got to go crazy with the hate shit in the comments just because now they feel included with their opinion, you know what I mean? Now that they know somebody else has a similar opinion, they feel included in the conversation or something. Like, people want to be a part of something so bad, bro. Like, that shit's like, it's cool to speak your mind, but it's lame as fuck to just, to, to, to shape, reshape your mind to fit the mold of somebody else's mind, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers, you niggas out here brainless. Half of these niggas out here brainless. Just following what the fuck the YouTube influencers and shit are saying, bro. Like, I'm glad that people value my opinion, you feel me? Like, but I hate to see a motherfucker hate on some shit just because I hate it. Well, I don't hate anything, so I ain't going to say that. I, I just I hate to see a motherfucker hating on something just because I said something not super positive about it. <laughs> if, if that, maybe that's a better way to say it. You know what I mean? I like to hear people with opposing opinions. Just like if y'all watched the full stream with me and Gifted Hater, there was a couple things that I disagreed with him on. Like I told him too, like, shit, I ain't gonna lie, I don't agree with that. But I feel where you coming from, for, for sure though, I feel you. Because like, niggas not, man, shit. You can't just got them... Morph into whoever the fuck you listening to, you know what I mean. You can't do that, bro. You can't just take their views and shit for no reason. Now if they make valid points and they truly sway you a certain way, and you want to express that, bro. Feel free to do that. I'm not saying don't hate. If you want to hate, 
Cause that's how you really feel, nigga. Do that shit. You know what I mean? Just don't, just don't be a fucking dick rider, bro. That shit is lame as fuck. That trend hating shit has got to stop, bro. My forecast for 2025 is that trend hating will be at an all-time low. The world will be at a better place when trend hating is at an all-time low. I would definitely appreciate if niggas stop doing that shit. Which I'm fucking nobody, you feel me? It don't matter what the fuck I say. Y'all ain't got to do shit for me. I just think that shit's lame as fuck, bro. Be yourself, have your own opinions, you feel me? Uh, speaking of uh, hate, a nigga that did get a lot of hate, I mentioned him a little while ago, Lamont Hope. That nigga was getting a lot of hate for doing the YouTube shit back in the day. Now he's killing it on the fucking podcast game. I fuck with that shit. This nigga got pff, some good podcasts, bro. Only thing pissing me off about his podcast is they ain't long enough, bro. Them bitches do not be long enough. He need to do two hours at least, bro, with most of his guests. But I dig what he's doing. He wants to have all of his guests to be repeat guests, which is very smart, bro. That way he never runs out of people. Let me know if y'all fucking with the... Uh, the Beautiful Day podcast that Lamont Hope has started up, bro. I fuck with it heavy. But, like, y'all ain't got to say y'all fuck with it just because I fuck with it. If you hate it, man, let me know in the comments if you fucking hate that shit. Like I said, I like it a lot, though, bro. Which, I'm a podcast-ass nigga, bro. I watch full episodes of The Nine Club. I just recently started listening to The Bunt podcast. I listen to full episodes of that. You know what I mean? I'm a podcast-ass nigga. I'm listening to that shit. I'm watching them bitches. You feel me? So that's just me personally, but, uh... Yeah, I fuck with his shit heavy. Uh, I wanted to say, I don't know if y'all noticed, but he's starting over on YouTube, though, bro. He started another YouTube channel. And damn, bro, that shit's kind of, like, sad to see him starting from square one as if he's a fucking nobody. This nigga's got videos on his channel right now with, like, 100 views and shit, bro. Like, that shit's sad from, like, two days ago and shit. Like, he, he literally just started the channel now. I don't even think... He, he can't even have 500 subs at the time of me recording this video, which today is April the 10th. Well, tonight is April the, the night of April the 10th. Well, basically the 11th, 2024, right now. This nigga don't even have 500 subs. Maybe not even 200 subs on his channel right now. I looked at it earlier today. It was I feel like it was only like 170 or some shit, 150 something. But yeah, bro, that shit's crazy, bro. This nigga had million, like over a million followers on TikTok at one point, posting skate content. One of the biggest skate YouTubers. And now he's starting over from fucking scratch on the skate YouTube channel. I think he just might have went about that shit wrong, though. He probably should have. Uh, he posted he posted a video on the new channel the same day that he announced that he was starting the new channel. So it's like, I don't know, bro. I feel like if he would have just directed people to the new channel before he put uh, videos up there, that way he already had like 500 subscribers on there at least. Then by the time he did drop something, there would be an audience for it and the algorithm would know who to show it to. I feel like he kind of fucked himself by not doing that. But who the fuck am I? I ain't no damn YouTube expert. That shit's just crazy though for me to see a nigga like him starting over. But that shit gives me motivation though. It gives me hope because like I get to see what all he's doing as he's just starting. And like since I'm still kind of just starting too, you feel me? It's like... I don't know, I can kind of watch what he's doing because he's already made mistakes and shit. He's already figured out the formula for Skate YouTube. You know, he's won on Skate YouTube already before. Now he's just, like, doing it again. So I get to, like, watch this shit, like, to see his journey, you feel me? Like, that shit's going to be... I don't know. I'm a nerd for shit like that, though, bro. I'm an analytics-ass nigga. So I'm, I'm a nerd for shit like that, bro. I like to watch the growth and shit. Like, I, I check my YouTube studio app at least 12 times a day. You feel me? Like, at least... The fuck am I talking about? I check it at least 13 times a day. Oh, Lord! Nah, for real, though, bro. I'm an analytics ass guy, bro. For real. I got to check that shit, bro. I have to. Even with my music, bro. I be checking my Spotify for artists just to see if I have random spikes in my music, which I do every now and then for no, no damn reason. But I be trying to pinpoint why and see what I can do to improve this and that and whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, yeah, salute to Lamont Hope, man. He was one of the uh, pioneers in this skate YouTube shit, too. I can't say pioneers, but I said he was one of the early guys that did it in a cool way. You feel me? He still got hella hate from it, but, like, he, he survived that shit, though. He survived the fire. He went through all the flames and shit. He got crucified, but he survived it, and now he's back podcasting, skate podcasting, and he's fucking killing that shit, bro. I salute that nigga for that shit, bro. That shit is nuts. Fuck with that shit, bro. Like I said, 
Uh, speaking of me being analytics driven though, bro, dumb data coming in on one of my videos. That shit was crazy. That's crazy as hell to me that like niggas is watching my shit. Like YouTubers that I be watching be watching me now. That shit is crazy as shit to me, man. I'm grateful for it though. It's just crazy. Like every day feel like a simulation, bro. Every day I check my damn YouTube studio or I check my Instagram and like it's something new every day that's just like crazy to me, bro. Like dumb data coming in on one of my shit. He said some like I don't know if he was being lame or what though. Like, it was on that weak ass fucking tier list video that I made. I hate that I even did that shit, but people was asking for it. I literally hate tier list videos, bro. I watch tier list videos now. I watch them. But every time I'm watching a tier list video, I'm like, I just be thinking to myself, what the fuck am I watching? Why the fuck am I being entertained by this? And for some goddamn reason, I made one. I know why, though. Y'all was asking for it. People requested it. But, like, goddamn. I did that shit. But, anyway, dumb data come in it. Because my tier list video was about skate YouTuber thumbnails. It was a skate YouTuber thumbnail tier list video. And he come in and it said something about, it was like content over thumbnails or some shit. I'm like, nigga, duh, content over thumbnails. Of course, the content is more important than the thumbnail, but nigga, nobody's not going to get to the content without seeing your thumbnail. You feel me? They got to see your thumbnail before they click on the content. And of course, the content still got to be good after after they saw and clicked on the thumbnail. But like, nigga, really, I was just making a tier list video with, I wanted to do something that I ain't seen nobody do over a fucking thousand times already on skate YouTube and skate YouTuber thumbnails was the only motherfucking thing I could think of you feel me and I already knew that it'd be some cringy ass thumbnails out here so I knew that probably could work that's the only fucking reason I did that shit you know what I mean but yeah regardless that shit is crazy to me to see a dumb data comment on my shit like I literally watch this shit I'm a analytics driven ass nigga so I definitely love this nigga videos because he breaks shit down and I would watch his videos like three times sometimes just to like really fully envelop myself in all of the data. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I like that nigga videos, bro. I fuck with it. I don't have the time and patience to put together a video like that. That's that calculated, that calculated and fucking uh, informative. I couldn't do it myself personally. I like more of this off the cuff just talking that shit, you know what I mean? Because that's just more of a vibe for me personally. And I got ADD. My attention span is pretty short. So when it comes to me even focusing for long enough to to edit one of those videos, spend a whole week editing a video, no way. Not me. Not doing it. So, yeah. Y'all will never get a video like that from me. And if y'all do, it'll be down the line when I have like an editor and maybe a team or some shit like that. I don't know. But that shit is crazy though. That a nigga like him was watching my shit. Nigga Spanish Mike. Like one of my damn, he commented on the video too. That was about him, of course. But he liked some shit on my Instagram, like a skate editor of me uh, yesterday or the day before. That shit was crazy. Mike Sinclair following me on the ground. Like what the fuck, Mike Sinclair twin? Like this is these are real people in the skateboarding world. Like real people. Gifted hater followed me on Instagram. Like what the fuck, like. And then, like, comment on one of my posts, nigga. We did a stream together. Like I don't know. This shit is a simulation, bro. Like, is skateboarding, they send me shoes. Well, I ain't going to say they just be sending me shoes. Uh, one of the reps did recently reach back out to me to see uh, if he could uh, hook me up with some more shit. But they done sent me shoes and shit, like boxes of shoes and clothes, like multiple boxes. Like, like what the fuck, bro? Like, me? That's crazy. Like, bro, me, Lord DeAndre, the rapper, rock star, you feel me? Goddamn, that shit's just crazy, bro. Like, niggas don't know me as a skateboarder, even though this was the first thing I was doing. But now, like, niggas know me as a skateboarder, twin. Like, I put a comment on somebody else's video, and then niggas be in, in replying to my comments. Like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. That shit. Man, we in a simulation, bro. There's no reason I should be here. There's no reason that you guys should be here watching me, bro. It's crazy. I'm grateful for every moment of it, though, bro. This shit is crazy, man. I just like experimenting and doing cool shit, though. Cool, lucrative shit at that. I'm gonna make money however I can, as long as it's fun. And this shit is some fun shit for me to do. And I love skateboarding. And I love talking about this shit. And I love the fact that y'all enjoy it. So I'm gonna keep doing it, like for y'all for sure. Like I'm definitely gonna keep doing it. And I'm appreciating the love. I probably done said that shit a hundred times by now on this channel, but I do appreciate the love. I just want y'all to know that shit for real. Uh, that's probably gonna wrap up this uh, 
this episode of Useless Wooden Toy Banner, though. I've been talking for a fucking minute. I don't even got to know how much. Oh, my God. I can't stop yet. I can't stop yet. It's one more fucking thing. It's one more thing that I wanted to speak about. Should I save it? I'll save it for the next one. I'll save it for the next one. Uh, just make sure y'all stay tuned, bro, because, yes, this next one, I'm going to go ahead and put an asterisk beside this one. Well, this has been an episode of Useless Wooden Toy Banter. Oh, my God, I've been going for, like, 50 minutes on this shit. Maybe that's a good thing, though. This would be, like, damn near like a podcast for y'all or some shit, I guess. Let me know in the comments if you did some more shit, if this is some shit that y'all want to see more of, for real. It's going to be, like, no editing, for real. This is just going to be... I'll probably do the same thing every time. Just have a, a skate video or some shit playing in the background. And then I'm going to just talk to y'all. And maybe in the future, maybe if y'all think I should go live or something, or whenever I fucking build up the courage to finally go live, maybe we'll start going live doing this shit. And then, yeah, I can interact with y'all a little bit more. That might be a cool thing to do. I don't know. Just get in the comments and let me know whatever, man. As y'all know, y'all, if y'all been following me for a minute, y'all should know I'll I be reading the comments, bro, and I follow some of y'all suggestions, you feel me? I, I be listening, bro, and I, I take heed. I fuck with the suggestions, bro, because y'all ain't doing nothing, but y'all are providing me with insight on what y'all want to see, and at the end of the day, this shit is for y'all anyway. So, yeah, for sure. All my links are going to be in the description. My website, merch, all that shit. I don't know if y'all seen the little quick glimpse of it at the beginning, but... Like I said, there's new products up here. Uh, this Lord DeAndre T is up there if y'all want to just rep me. But we also got the staple pieces like the X Triple I hoodie with the uh, shit. It's got the shit on the sleeve. The, uh, this is the same shit I got on right now. Excuse me. Sleeve, the back graphic, of course. We got the T. We got fucking poker cards. Y'all want to play cards with some X Triple I cards. We got the keychains. They actually might be out of stock right now. I need to check that and edit that on the website. I think the keychains are out of stock. We got these pillow, these little uh, small pillows, little small Bluetooth speaker you can take to the skate park with you with the X Triple I campaign on it. We got the board shorts, and we got this bomber jacket and the bag. Y'all probably seen all three of these in my last vlog on YouTube. I had on the shorts and the bomber, and I I always had a duffel bag with me. We got the pins, water bottle. You feel me? We got some cool shit on there. Y'all can rep the brand, support the movement. Whatever, whatever, y'all don't got to. But at the end of the day, this has been another episode. I say another episode. This is the first motherfucking episode of Useless Wooden Toy Banter with Lord DeAndre. Oh, Lord!